Rub up your engines! Now today I got an interesting vehicle. It's an 86 and a half <laughs> Nissan hard body. They sold a lot of hard bodies just a few years before this one, they called them Datsuns. These, they switched to call them hard bodies because they have double wall in the back and they're pretty solid built vehicles. And the proof of how solid this thing is, even though it's 36 years old, most of it's still original. This has got the V6 engine in it. The big bash against these hard bodies, especially the old ones, was lack of horsepower. The old ones had like 80 horsepower to the rear wheels. Okay, this one's got like about 180, so it's got a lot more power. And since it's got a camper on it, you really need it. But with this V6 engine, it can tow. He's hooking up a little coffee trailer. I'm gonna do a business in, probably close to 2,000 pounds with all the crap in it, and it won't have any problems towing. The interesting thing about this is, it looks like it has a carburetor. See, it's got the big old air filter that carburetors have, but voila, no, it has the old fashioned throttle body fuel injection. So even though this is old, 1986 and a half, it's fuel injected. You don't have to deal with all that crap of carburetors because the later model carburetors, right before they made this fuel injection system, had so much ridiculous electronics and anti-pollution equipment. When they got old, none of them would run that well. This is fuel injected. It still runs quite well. Similar to the Americans when they went to their throttle body. This is Nissan's take, but it still runs perfectly fine. And this one, as you can see, is a four by four. Most guys want to get a four by four, especially if they got a camper top, they're going to go hunting, camping. And yes, as you can see, this is a real four wheel drive vehicle. Here's the five speed standard tranny. Your Four wheel drive, two wheel high, four wheel high, neutral and four wheel low. While we're in here, you can see it's a pretty basic vehicle. It's got the little back seat. Now, <laughs> at least they had the common sense of putting it sideways because if they put it the other way, you couldn't have any legs. At least this way, there's room for somebody. You can stretch your legs out. Somebody sits on the other side here. You're gonna have feet in your face. No AC on this baby. Cold is just outside air. <laughs> The heater still works though. Now they call them hard bodies because basically they do have pretty hard bodies. They're pretty well made. This thing spent its entire life in Colorado before it moved to Tennessee and look. The frame is still solid. It's not rotting away. You saw them the roads in Colorado for sure. Now he didn't have to replace the center shaft on the drive shaft because it had rotten over time. You expect that with the car but I mean, you look at the frame and all the suspension parts, they're still in pretty good shape. And it's got a massive solid rear end because of course, most of them were just rear wheel drive cars. They made those for years, but this four wheel drive. So you're not gonna get stuck anywhere. And this is the advantage of old technology. The modern four wheel drives or all wheel drives, they're computer controlled. They're insanity to fix when they break and break they do. This has what? A gear shift. You can't make it any simpler than that. Two wheel high, four wheel high, neutral, and four wheel low. You don't have to worry about, it. gee, it won't engage. Well, you're grabbing and engaging it yourself. No computers, no electronic motors. Simple stuff that could last forever if you take care of it. And yes, all technology means you gotta work more cause it's got the lockers here. When you put it into four wheel driving, when you use the front, you gotta lock them and unlock them. It's not that big of a deal. Realize the modern ones, again, it's all done by computers and servos. They break, they cost a fortune to fix. This is a very simple system. And then people say, in my new one, I just push a button and it goes into four wheel drive, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, when it works. And I mean, hey, if you're going in four wheel drive and you're going into rough terrain, it's probably a good idea to get out, put the lockers on and Look around and see what you're looking at. Don't just push a button and go flying into the wilderness. You might go flying off a cliff if you don't watch it. Now we'll go back under the hood. It's Nissan's V6 engine. They made millions of these things. As you can hear. That's right up. Now this one idles a tad too high because somebody fiddled with the screw on it and it's a throttle body, you're really not supposed to mess with that butt. You can see how smooth the engine is. It doesn't make much noise other than the fan whirring. Because yes, it's got a mechanical fan. There it is. 
Again, we're talking simple mechanical reliability. Instead of an electric fan, a mechanical one that runs off a fan belt. Yes, they get slightly worse gas mileage. Maybe, I don't know, a quarter of a mile a gallon at most. Hardly anything, really. It's just simplicity. The stuff can last a long time. It is just more long term than any electronic stuff. Electronics are always going to break. Physical stuff can last forever. And yeah, the front bumper could need a repainting, but interestingly enough, when you get to the back, the chrome still is in decent shape. Bring back the days of chrome. And since it's got a top, we'll look inside. There's an awful lot of room inside here. And like I said, they call them hard bodies because they have double wall construction in here. These things are solid as can be. Of course, these aren't the original rims, but they came with a vehicle. But the tires have kind of a funny story. When he bought it originally in 98, it had the famous exploding Firestone tires on it. So he got money in the settlement and he replaced them with much better tires. He has a Goodrich TAKL tires on it, and they lasted quite some time, but he doesn't drive it that much, so he wanted to get them rotated a while ago, and the guy said, I'm not rotating those tires, they're all dry rotted, which of course they were. Then he replaced them with these, but he did get rid of the exploding Firestones before they exploded while he was driving down the road. Well, the hood, take it for a spin. Not sure. The dash ain't what it used to be, it's all cracked up, but it's a hard body. These six cylinders, they still work. No horrible rattling noises or piston knock. Still runs great. Nissan hard body with a camper on it. High up in the air, four wheel drive. Sure, it rides kind of like a boat, but that's how these old pickup trucks ride. And the brakes, we had them on. They work perfectly good. Got a little bit of pull to the left, but I mean, hey, it's old. And sometimes when you turn the power steering, kind of sounds like a goose honking away, but it still works, it's still got power assist. There goes the goose honking away. Now it's by no means a drag race truck, but here we go our little drag strip. Let's see what it can do. One, two, three. Not exactly awe-inspiring, but it gets down the road. And with the four-wheel drive ability, you're not gonna get stuck in this thing. Well, the gears work perfectly fine. We'll put it in fifth gear. No problem getting in gear, smooth shifts. High old truck for cruising on the countryside. Or going into the countryside with the four wheel drive. Not that many of these left to buy, but hey, you never know. You might find an old barn find. And if you do, hey, go out and buy it. If you don't mind goose sound and power steering and creaks here and there. I do have to say though, if you look at one of these, get a V6 engine in them, they're a lot smoother. They got a lot more power if you do any kind of serious driving, especially off-road. So what I have to say about this old antique? Well, antiques often were better made and can last a really long time. Now this baby was made 14 years before Renault took over Nissan and pretty much single-handedly drove the company into a giant cliff over the edge and it's been falling ever since. And the Japanese controlled the company and made some really good vehicles like this. It's a shame they don't make them like that anymore, but they used to make really good vehicles that could run a really long time. And they made an awful lot of them. So like I say, you find one of these in a barn and it runs, hey, snap it up. It'll probably outlast the new crap that they're making. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, if you ever seen that uh, the mechanic who lives in his garage, he's got YouTube stuff too. You might watch it. It's kind of entertaining. Now, you realize the guy's hamming it up for the cameras. It's the game that people play nowadays. But I do have to say that I have known many mechanics that spend more time in their garage than they did at home with their wife. And unfortunately, a lot of it was because they felt more at home in their garage than they did with their wife. They didn't get along. Me, I'm the exact opposite. I love being around them my wife, you know? I'm not living in a garage. The machines live in the garage. And interestingly enough, one of the pigs lives in the garage now. The dog's also living, and the pig has decided that it's a dog and not 
pig. So instead of hanging out with the other pigs in the cold, it's going in the garage with the dogs and sleeping in the beds there. So, <laughs> But there are a lot of mechanics that end up doing stuff like that, mainly because they want to hide. There was a guy who lived next door to my parents' house in Niagara Falls. He practically lived in his garage because he didn't get along with his wife. He'd fix up cars and spend hundreds and hundreds of hours. And then he'd spend a lot of money because he wasn't a painter, paint a guy to paint it great. By the time he was done, we figured out that he made about 10 cents an hour for the labor that he put in these things. But he didn't care because he was avoiding his wife in the first place. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.